Hello everyone, uh, this is the Himalayan webinar series, uh, module 22. Today we'll do a beautiful traverse across some six, seven passes around the stock range in Ladakh. As usual, we are live every day at eight o'clock on Zoom. Videos posted later on on Insta TV, YouTube, Facebook, and the blog ultrajourneys.org. Here we can see uh, the beautiful stock range uh, somewhere from near uh, the peak of Stock Kangri. See beautiful views on the surrounding uh, Hemis National Park. Right side, we can also see the Marka Valley, which is quite popular with uh, hikers from Leh. Uh, today, we'll take a look at a beautiful circular traverse around the Stock Kangri and the Hemis, like um, several passes as well as the Marka Valley there, where we start off from. We'll go uh, over the Kong, Kong Marula, the Shabodakla, the Shangla, the Matula, Stock Kangri, uh, hop on top of the un unexpected Stokla and the Gandala. Here we can see again a nice map of uh, the Ladakh region. Uh, and so Stock Kangri will be located on the Indus River Valley here. Uh, here you have Marka, the Marka Valley, the interior valley, and then here is the Stock Kangri pretty much opposite Leh uh, in the Hindus uh, Valley. Here also we have Hamas who will basically do a circular traverse around uh, these two peaks. Here you can see also the previous uh, traverses we discussed, uh, the Tsarap River, the Zanskar internal traverse, the uh, multiple 10 year traverse planning from Kanji in Ladakh to uh, Hanumil in Zanskar. Uh, previous module then we discussed a similar circular route in the western side of Ladakh. So today we'll move a little bit east. Here we can see the same in uh, open street maps. So one thing you'll notice about Ladakh, which I didn't mention earlier, is that even though the passes are pretty high there, 4,500, 5,000, that uh, the steepness is much less than, than say the Dolador or the Peak Panjal, where you climb up very steeply. It is, uh, even though the altitude is maybe sometimes higher, the valleys are more stretched out and the um, ascents typically are, are quite gradual that way. Voila, here uh, we have uh, the Marka Valley at a pretty solid altitude of 4,000 meters, starting from Chilling, uh, covering some 12 villages all the way to Hankar, the last uh, settlement in Marka, uh, which is no passes, but a solid uphill climb along the Marka River of 800 meters. Easy because it's very touristic, a lot of homestays. Uh, you can just walk uh, without any luggage, any food. Uh, from there, we can uh, get over the Kongmarula to go towards the Hindu side. And then uh, we can, again, just like the previous module, Western Ladakh, we can go in parallel with the Indus Valley, skipping over several interior passes like the Shab, Kodakla, the Shangla, the Matula, which brings us at the village of Stock, from where we can ascend the Stock Angri. And from there again, we can proceed over the Stokla and the Gandala to end up back near uh, Skiu at the Marka Valley. All these passes are again pretty easy, moderate, even though they're pretty high. If you look at the altitude, uh, except maybe Stokangri, Stokangri is a little more, but again, not super difficult, I would say, compared to uh, Pir Panjal, <laughs> this old kids play. So perfect, uh, well indicated, well laid out routes. Most of this perfect start for uh, new solo hikers or uh, alpine style hikers. Uh, this range around uh, pretty close to Lay, also easy accessible. Voila, here we have the stock range. Let's take an interactive uh, traverse. Uh, so here you can see the old stock range with the stock uh, here. So voila, beautiful stock range. So we're basically gonna circle around this uh, peak here, 6,000 plus uh, 150 meters roughly. Uh, proceeding initially here on the Marka Valley on the right side, basically uh, from uh, Chilling, where actually uh, the Marka gets joined by the uh, Sarap River, uh, sorry, Zanska River flowing from Zanskar. And then you go through some almost 12 towns, pretty much flat over uh, most people take two days. You can also do it in a single day to the last village of uh, Hankar here, from where then you can jump over to. Uh, Shang Sumdo, actually, this uh, town here, Chogdo and Shang Sumdo. And from there, we follow this uh, parallel list of passes in parallel with the Indus Valley here, the past Indus Valley. So we're just skipping over 
these internal uh, passes to take a turn here at the gondola back to skew at uh, uh, the entrance of the Marca Valley. Voila, so from the top of Stokanger here also, you get beautiful views on the internal national, I mean the Hemis National Park here. Voila, so putting all the names in place, this is roughly how it looks, right? The um, Indus Valley here, and uh, this traverse of passes from where we head back to the Marca Valley here with all these little settlements and a lot of homestays and food available. From Hankar, you can also es escape uh, to another pass uh, towards another interior valley. That's probably the subject of a uh, future session. At the end of the Marka Valley, you get also stunning views on the famous Kanyansi 2 and 1. Voila, so let's get started near Chilling at the entrance of Marka, where we actually initially go along the Zanska River, uh, now a big BRO site, Border Roads Organization. A two-lane highway under construction connecting Ladakh with Zanskar. Okay, so as we then enter into the beautiful Marka Valley here, here a bit later in the evening, you can say again, just like remaining Ladakh, it's a high altitude desert, that same brown landscape, barren, except for, <coughs> excuse me, the um, <coughs> green, I hope it's not Corona. Please use your masks. Uh, I hope so. Pretty nice green settlements, right? Form all farming hamlets, all sustained uh, villages uh, along the stream. Voila, here we can see Skew, one of the first bigger settlements. So we can see people in addition to farming, they have their veggie gardens. Uh, it's mostly to prepare food for the thousands or tens of thousands of Europeans and Indians uh, hiking through this valley. Here you can see a typical. Um, 40 of horses transporting either uh, goods within the villages or uh, could also be a hiking party so that they were dropping camping gear and food for a couple of hikers. <laughs> Voila, everywhere you'll have these homestays, very comfortable basically. These are homes, not hotels, homes where you can stay at home. And for a fixed package, uh, this seems to be a standardized uh, price, 1,200 rupees. You have night stay, you have dinner, you have breakfast, and you have packed lunch. Uh, which is, according to me, a little expensive. Uh, but again, yeah, because of the foreign inflow here near Leh, yeah, that I guess raises the prices. So don't expect any whole hospitality in the Marka Valley. Nobody is going to treat you like in uh, most of the other places where I took you through so far. This is a commercial place, which you can feel. So totally different experience, not my type, to be honest. Voila. So then here are the villages, uh, some 12 villages that you cross from. Uh, bottom to top, from Kaya at the beginning to Hankar at the end. Uh, displayed here, you can see Marka. There's a village also called Marka towards the end of the Marka Valley, which um, looks, again, so beautiful in this uh, barren uh, landscape. Even the, the village itself is all kind of ruined, the Gompa, the, maybe the old fortress uh, built on top of a peak. It's all like forgotten glory, I guess, uh, the only thing that keeps these people still alive. In addition to their farming, is the large inflow of uh, tourism. Voila, everywhere you will have these tents, you can comfortably eat. So easy, you can't lose your way, you have food, you have sleep. So very safe option for uh, a first step in uh, solo hiking. And then as you come in people's homes, of course, it's very beautiful. These Ladaki homes with the fire uh, carpets uh, covered on the floor. Everybody sitting around, the family, the kids playing, as well as the tourists uh, making food, staying warm in the, in the cold nights here. Um, so it's, it's a nice experience, all the traditional utensils on this plane. Homely feeling, definitely, with the woodwork on top. Voila, and then we come here to the last um, town of Hankar. Hankar, where at, um, you can see it looks close, but it's still far away. The two peaks of Kang Yangtze 2 and Kang Yangtze 1 at the end, which is also just like Stokangri, very climbable, non technical peak, at least the left one. Uh, so then from here, we can jump over <coughs> towards uh, Rumtse. Rumtse is on the Manali Leh Highway. Uh, did a big loop, which I will skip now. We'll think that as part of a separate section, but in this case, we'll just focus on the travelers uh, around Stock. Two friendly ladies here um, in a daba, so I 
as usual after a couple of days uh, of hiking, which was like three, four days from Chilling till uh, Manadile Highway, if you go straight. Uh, repacked my food supplies, which usually looks like this, some packed foods, which will get me for two days, nice alu parota or something, it's quite energetic. And then to supply both the sugars, the lost sugars and the lost salt here, as well as some backup, uh, ready to eat noodles, uh, don't need cooking, so all easy for a fast hike and minimalist. Um, if you burn a lot of calories, you need to keep your energy level up. Very friendly ladies, even though they're on the highway, they even offered me to stay for free in one of the rooms being looking for a camp outside. Okay, so then uh, from, uh, what is it here? Yeah, Rumse, I took a bus towards Leh and got off at Miru, a couple of 20 kilometers farther from where we can get into the uh, Chapeau d'Akla. So here Miru, you could see it's like a non-touristic place. It's just like one of these ruined kinds of <coughs> dried up farming settlements along the Manalile Highway. Only older people are there. I don't think this will survive another generation. Again, as you get in away from the Manalile Highway, you come a beautiful trail here to the Chapeau d'Akla. But again, that same barren landscape, uh, rock, dust. And then they had 4,000 meter altitude with a heavy sun on top of you. It can be quite challenging uh, if it was not for the open breeze. Here you can see, right, that this landscape is, is much more gradual uh, as you ascend to the passes compared to those steep sections that you saw in the Pif Panjala or the Dolador a couple of modules earlier. Here then we come over the Chabot d'Akla. There are actually two passes nearby. Uh, this was one of them. <clears throat> so here again, we get down and you can see a little bit further down one of these cattle herders, uh, like a loner, staying in the middle of nowhere, at least in the summer to graze the cattle in the high altitudes. You can see very gradual passes here, uh, nothing steep like uh, Lower Himachal. Voila, and as we get down then to the town of Shangsundo, which is also directly accessible from Hangar, which we saw previously. So this one you can actually directly access to the Kung Marula, the Kung Pao that I took. Uh, to make a nice loop with the Marka Valley, actually, lay to lay uh, to the Kangura, Kangura, Kang, Kungmarula, sorry, single pass loop. From here, instead of going to the lay side, I took a left along the uh, Shangla. Along the Shangla, we have the village of Shang, that's a little bit off the touristic route. So here I met this nice family, I was actually on the way from Leh, I uh, had to, I guess, yeah, I lost my electronics, so I had to pick up a new power bank and some uh, backup stuff. And then while walking along, long, long to this interior town of Shang, which was the base of my uh, Shangla Traverse, uh, I met this nice guy, Ladaki guy, who just uh, returned from uh, his, uh, I mean, just came for his annual leave from his uh, uh, posting in the Nubra Valley the uh, Sation Glacier, actually the highest battlefield in the world. Very friendly family, beautiful home, uh, took care of me again. And immediately that stark contrast between the commercial Marca Valley and this uh, non-expecting hospitality, it's like a different world uh, to experience. So stayed with this uh, family and then the next day basically took off on here is a fresh cooked meal. So this is so much more nutritious than uh, cooking some crappy Maggie. Sorry, no. Voila, and then here at the end of the Shang uh, village, again, you see that uh, dark red uh, terrain, rock. Uh, we move on then towards the base of the uh, Shangla. So this is also a little bit of a famous route again, being close to Leh, so you'll find hiking parties on the way, you'll find a nice little daba on the way, where you can get some tea, so very comfortable, easy to find the way laid out trails, even if the trails not thin out. You just follow the poop of the horses. Voila, hopping over the Kangla, again, a very gradual pass, um, marked with Tibetan prayer flags here and some money stones. You get down to an intermediate section on the way to the second pass, the Matulam. Everywhere you can see those expedition-style trekkers with and uh, the toilet tent will be there somewhere, the kitchen tent, uh, the dining tent, and then all the comfortable tents of the hikers with a party typically sometimes of 18 horses carrying this heavy load. Voila, jumping over the Matula, you can see afternoon the weather is again changing, then spark coming up. 
And then uh, we come actually to a place called Ma Mancarmo, which is the base of uh, Stock uh, Kangri trek. Uh, here, my plan was just to proceed to the Stokla, as I'm not really of a big guy. I don't like to go up and down the same way. I want to keep moving forward. But here's, uh, I mean, the nice Daba owner told me that uh, it was actually worth, it's quite beautiful. So he tempted me to give it a shot, uh, climbing the Stokangri. So from this base camp, uh, after getting some food also here, normally the Dabas were all closed. Uh, the villagers downstream at the village of Stok uh, complained about all the food, I mean, the waste uh, coming down the stream from uh, like lots of lots of hikers doing this traverse. So anyway, got some food and then proceeded like one hour upstream uh, to 4,900 meters, where I met some guys that I met previously, a Swiss hiking party uh, in uh, Zanskar, actually. So those guys, again, nicely took care of me, gave me some food, pitched up my bivy around uh, 9 p.m. And then they told me 11 p.m., two hours later, please get up. We are starting our ascent to in early morning, have a clear window. When the window, weather window, sorry, and see the sunrise from the top of Stokkangri, a five, six hour climb. Okay, that was quite nice. It was raining that cold, it was 4,900 meters. But again, that BV, uh, the BV, the sleeping bag, and the uh, sleeping mat uh, from Husefa, bluebolt.im, kept me warm even in these extreme conditions. Morning again, cup of tea, and we are ready to go. Heavy snow this year. This is somewhere, I think, and later in July that we are um, climbing up, basically plugging through the snow with a small 40 freezing temperature. So being a minimalist, uh, this was the only place where I didn't go in my shorts or without my puff jacket. <laughs> Okay, so again, as you can see, uh, being a touristic place in Ladakh, the open street maps will show you on all the trails. So you could actually even do these things yourself. You don't need a guide. Here we have, uh, you can see, we're actually crossing a small glacier, a glacier section midway on the way to uh, Stokkangri, 6,140 meter altitude. Here you can see that final uh, ridge uh, traverse in like some uh, 200 meter final climb here to the peak. Uh, where uh, people typically are roped up as it's a steep drop from the other side of the ridge. You can see beautiful views here on the right side, which is actually the Marka Valley through which we came a few days earlier. Voila, here again, that same uh, visualization of that inner stock range, stock hungry being the highest peak in the stock range, and then the right side, the Marka Valley going in parallel with that. Voila, and then on the way down, you can actually see what we went through in the night, deep, deep snow, uh, it's already a little bit fresh now, which I see there, or it's melted, I guess, um, as the sun rises up. Beautiful white landscape, stunning views on the Himis National Park from that vantage point of 6,140 meter altitude. Okay, as we got down then again to the base camp, uh, went a little bit down the Stock River and then took a left into the side valley that uh, leads to the Stokla. Uh, there we could see like steep rising ridges again, I think similar to what I saw in the Western Ladakh section as we go parallel over these ridges uh, in the Indus Valley there. Here is the Stokla, that was a quite um, a calorie sucker, <laughs> it took a lot of effort to come to this place. And uh, after the Stokla again, you can see you follow some interior valley which eventually always connects to the uh, main uh, Hemi, uh, sorry, uh, the main Indus Valley. Voila. So then we come at, uh, again, a kind of touristic loop, uh, the one that starts from Le, Fe, Rumbak, Yurutse, and Ski. So there again, a lot of homestays and uh, like a nice entry point to the Marka Valley also. Here I actually ended up at the end of the day at uh, a nice farming settlement, beautiful Yurutse, just a few houses. The big house you say that is basically a big homestay, like some 10, 15 uh, Europeans, all nationalities staying there, uh, paying the standard 1,200 rupee package, food and stay included. So beautiful interiors, you can see this is probably one of the richer families there, uh, all the utensils on this plate, a beautiful wood burner or hoop burner where they uh, keep the house warm and then cook food at the same time. Yummy fresh food there, uh, pretty reasonable. This at least was a place where I could just pay for the food excluding the night stay uh, 
in some homestays, they will actually not give you just food. They will ask you to pay the whole package, even though you don't have intentions to stay as you have your own camping gears. So after having food here, uh, catching up with a couple of girls from uh, the Netherlands and a nice lady from France, uh, basically moved out in the cold night and settled down in this nice little stupa, kind of covered stupa at the edge of the village. Warm stay, open air, nothing beats some fresh oxygen while sleeping. Next day then again, proceeding to the base of the Gandala, which connects back to the Marka Pass. Uh, you can see everywhere around Marka, you'll, you'll never be alone. You'll always have the, especially the U European expedition. So whenever you see these horses there with these, all these tents and these gears, these are typically people who are on the move for two, three weeks at least. Uh, otherwise there's no point hiring a party like that just for a local trek in Marka. All right, so then crossing the gondola, we come uh, across in four months, unbelievable, my first solo hiker <laughs> out of hundreds of Europeans, at least one guy from Italy was going solo. Uh, hopefully he was not quite carrying Corona at that time, but still uh, just like anybody else, uh, not so minimalist at least. Uh, this guy again was puffing like anything under uh, 25 kgs of luggage. Uh, Voila, and then we come across one interior settlement, like very barren again, very kind of dry and almost like forgotten history. The settlement of Shingu on the confluence of two streams, where um, we eventually then follow like a pretty narrow gorge, like small stream, but kind of uh, stream hitting left and right, snaking in this narrow canyon. You have to cross it several times and it picks up uh, in waterfalls as we get down eventually to the village of uh, Marka again at the town of Skiu. Voila, beautiful loop, perfect uh, perfect loop, I think, to start for any beginner, any uh, one who wants to give it the first shot at solo or alpine style hiking away from the commercial parties. Even though it's a little bit commercial, Marka lay stock area, it's, it's a different experience than uh, tagging along in a big queue of uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 people in a commercial group. Want more information at any of these traverses, passes we discussed here is in detail, blocked on my blog, ultrajourneys.org. So check out, uh, search the tech cloud for Marka stock and you'll find the entries. Okay, see you guys tomorrow for the next module on the beautiful uh, Paspa range. <laughs>